Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Chairman. And uh, in beginning, I, I want to take note of the fact that you, Mr. Chairman, have spent decades, literally decades, keeping child welfare issues bipartisan here in the United States Senate. And I commend you for that. Look forward to building on that partnership. I know Becky Shipp is here. She has carried the torch for many years as well. And I think once again, the Finance Committee can work in a bipartisan area on this issue. Mr. Chairman and colleagues, this morning in America, there's likely to be a single mom with two kids, multiple part-time jobs, and one really big worry. She works long hours to provide for her family, but even then it's a struggle to pay the bills and keep food on the table. And because her work schedule changes week to week, she's forced to leave her children unattended at times. A neighbor might place a concern call to Child Protective Services. Once that happens, social workers have to choose between two not very good options, breaking up the family or doing nothing at all to help. And that has to change. Whenever you ask anyone who's been through the child welfare system about what could help them the most, the answer is often, and I quote here, helping my mom, helping my dad, helping my family. But that's just not in the cards when social workers have nothing to offer but foster care. Today, kids predominantly wind up in foster care because of their families, like that single mom, are caught in these enormously desperate circumstances that lead to neglect. Most youngsters in foster care aren't there because of physical or sexual abuse. Maybe mom or dad needs help covering the bills for a month. Substance abuse treatment, connections to childcare. Oftentimes a youngster's aunt, uncle, or grandparents could step up, especially if they had just a little bit of assistance. In my judgment, every single one of those avenues ought to be explored before breaking the family apart. In fact, it might save resources in the long run without compromising on safety. Now back in the mid-1990s, there was a big debate about what we're going to talk about this morning. A gentleman by the name of Newt Gingrich said that the answer here was to put the kids in orphanages. And I remembered hearing that and remembered from Grey Panther days that a lot of the seniors in a lot of the churches they went to had been talking about how a grandparent might be able to step in, might be able to step in for a short period of time when their child, the parent, the second generation, in effect, was having a little problem. They were out of work for a while. They had a substance abuse problem. And I learned then that older people, grandparents, aunts, uncles, were an enormous untapped potential of kin that could make a big difference in terms of how we assist these troubled youngsters. So back then in the 1990s, I authored the Kinship Care Act, which said that immediate relatives, aunts and uncles or grandparents who met the necessary standards for caring for a child would have the first preference, the first preference under law when it comes to caring for a niece or a nephew or grandchild. And it, in effect, was the first federal law that, ever, that had been enacted to promote kinship care. So here we are in 2015, and I think we have an opportunity, as Chairman Hatch just suggested, in going even further to help these youngsters thrive with kin. It begins with letting the states run with fresh policies that will support families when they've fallen on hard times. There's already proof that waving states out of the old-fashioned federal system can produce results. My home state of Oregon has a program, and I'm very pleased that uh, Chuck Nyby is here. We call it at home differential response because it basically is all about signaling 
that every child and every family may require a different type of support. The old two option system, basically saying it's either foster care or nothing, doesn't cut it. And what Mr. Nyby is going to talk about is how Oregon has taken a more tailored approach to help the families out. Finance Committee is lucky to have Chuck Nyby from the Oregon Department of Human Resources, and I think my colleagues are going to be interested in where Oregon's headed. Strong families mean strong kids. That's the bottom line. And tomorrow, I'm going to introduce legislation that builds on that first bill of the 1990s on kinship care. Our new proposal will be called the Family Stability and Kinship Care Act. And the bill will make sure that more states are in a position to adopt fresh strategies like Oregon's and also provide more opportunities to tap that extraordinary potential that's out there of grandparents, aunts, uncles, and family members that can step in in the kinds of circumstances where otherwise a child may just have one of two options that they don't care for. And I'll close simply by saying I want to make it clear that this is in no way a condemnation of foster care. The fact is we know kids for which foster care has been a lifesaver. Kids for whom foster care was a safe place where they can grow up and thrive. What this is all about is creating as many good choices as we possibly can for youngsters to grow up in a safe, healthy environment. That means keeping families uh, together. And I'll close by way of saying that I said at the outset that Chairman Hatch has put in decades decades trying to steer this child welfare debate in a bipartisan way. I commend him for it, and I want the chairman and our colleagues on both sides of the aisle to know I think we've got an opportunity to rise to the occasion again, and I look forward to working with the chairman and all of you on it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.